Hello and welcome back to 2K14 Universe. It is me, Jitch, and you are watching Annex. Well, first things first here on NXT, we got Jake the Snake, former Raw superstar, making his entrance. Uh, we've got quite a few former Raw superstars on NXT now to think about it. We've got Jake the Snake, we've got the Nexus, Brodus Clay. That's at least five. But Jake the Snake, set for a singles competition against another former Raw superstar, as a matter of fact. Someone who's come under a bit of fire recently, and there's been some rumors starting about the Nexus. David Otunga. And approaching the ring, representing the Nexus, he is a graduate of Harvard Law School, weighing 229 pounds, David Otunga. Now, I don't know if anybody's heard about these rumors recently, but apparently there's been rumors that the reason Wade Barrett stepped in to team with Justin Gabriel is because the Nexus have taken exceptional notice of uh, one David Otunga's failures in the past, and I'm starting to think that maybe this guy isn't cut out to be a, a part of the Nexus and a champion. And this kind of brings speculation to tonight's match. Is this a trial? You know, the Nexus is set for tag team action up next. We're going to be seeing Barrett and Gabriel in non-title action against uh, Sergeant Slaughter and uh, his buddy Big John Studd, one of the most notable tag teams in all of NXT. <laughs> and so it kind of makes you wonder, uh, will, uh, will Otunga be at ringside for that match? Will he have any kind of involvement? You know, I, I said recently that David Otunga has hit 50 losses. Uh, he's the first Nexus member to achieve, if achieve is the word for that. He's, I think he's one of the first superstars in the WWE to achieve that. I believe him and Sin Cara. Or maybe he's not at 50 losses, actually. Oh, no. I might have been thinking of Sin Cara. Well, David Otunga and Sin Cara were once an alliance. As strange as that sounds to say nowadays. But yes, David Otunga has 51 overall losses. I think, it, does he have the most? Sin Cara has... 50. Yeah, David Otunga is one above the, who a lot of people perceive as the biggest loser ever. And the only difference between Otunga and Sinkara is that Otunga does have 20 victories to his name. He's been around since the very beginning. Uh, he was one third of the Nexus back then. He's one third of the Nexus now. And uh, he is also the A-lister, if you didn't know that. He is, he is indeed also the A-lister. So David A-list Otunga. Oh, come on now. That was just uncalled. Uh, going one-on-one -on -one with Jake Roberts here tonight. And uh, we've got a big main event coming your way because we got a triple threat. All of the people that were uh, initially involved in the uh, determining the <sighs> qualifiers. Uh, I'm trying to think of the right phrasing here because I'm really bad at this, this part normally. Um... Those that were competing in qualifying matches in the past, uh, they are all set to compete in a triple threat. Uh, and by qualifying matches, I mean qualifying on your spot matches. They are set to compete in a uh, triple threat um, tonight after Biggie Langston was screwed out of his opportunity by Andre the Giant. He's been put back on the shelf, unfortunately, at Biggie Langston suffering some serious injuries after being smashed through a table and you know, just brutalized by Andre the Giant. Uh, but we will be having another Earn Your Spot, a makeup one, uh, next week here on NXT, where uh, a superstar uh, from NXT will be facing off against a superstar from Raw or SmackDown, their choice. And uh, I'm very curious to see uh, what will happen there. But we got a triple threat. Fandango, Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, the three original participants, all set to face off in just one match. The winner will get, unfortunately, what was Biggie's opportunity next week here on NXT. Regarding the attack from Andre the Giant, Bobby the Brain Heenan has spoken out on it recently. He said that uh, Andre truly believes that it's not over until he says it's over, and Biggie Langston is absolutely not going to tuck his ta tuck his tail between his legs and run away from Andre the Giant. Andre may have beaten Biggie twice, but he's not done until Biggie is finished for good. 
So there you have it. It sounds to me like we could be seeing uh, Biggie and Andre part three. Big choke slam spine buster by David Otunga. This could be a big win for him here tonight. And it is. Well, it will disappear that rumors of his demise were a little exaggerated. David Otunga beating Jake the Snake to kick off NXT. I mean, arguably not the biggest victory ever. Dave, Jake Roberts has uh, not had the best track record in the past, but since coming into NXT, it does feel like he's been rejuvenated a little bit. But nonetheless, a uh, big win for David Otunga, and perhaps this will help relieve some of the pressure put on him as the uh, least deserving in the Nexus. And actually, speaking of the Nexus, there's been some other rumors regarding that, which I'll get into in just a moment. But up next, we got ourselves a tag team matchup the tag team champions from the Nexus, Wade Barrett and Justin Gabriel, are set to compete against Big John Stud and Sergeant Slaughter. What an amazing match this is going to be. comes truly one of the worst of the worst <laughs> it's sergeant slaughter everybody Seth. <laughs> i just won't put him over on commentary at all. uh set to compete in this tag team match here tonight what a what a what an absolute travesty it would be <laughs> for the tag team champions to lose to this guy i mean big john stud sure that's one thing but sergeant slaughter oh god I'd have to I'd have to say strip Gabriel and Barrett of the tag team championships there and then if they lost to this joke. Unbiased commentary. You can always count on that from me. And his tag team partner from Los Angeles, California, weighing 367 pounds. Big John. Well, he is big, he is stud, and his name is John. It's Big John Stud. What a member of NXT this guy is. He's definitely one of the members of NXT of all time. He kind of reminds me of Come Tuesday. You know Come Tuesday? <laughs> he kind of reminds me of that guy. I know he's got a name. I know it's Von Wagner. You don't have to get all factual with me. I just wanted to call him Come Tuesday, all right? I got a little bit. A little bit. A moment of silence, please, for the worst joke ever told. What? What? What happened to the Nexus thing? No, I have a Nexus theme. Oh, but We Are One is such a good song. I mean, this song's fine too. I, I you know, I actually quite like this one, but like, why did it not look? I just got 2 k 14 again. I had a video come up in my suggested today. <laughs> Where someone said that this was the best 2K game ever made. <laughs> you haven't played it. You haven't played it since it came out. You haven't, you haven't. Sorry, I'll, st <laughs> I'll stop being an asshole now. <laughs> I just, I just had to mention no hate to that video either. I'm sure it's it's very good, and he probably spent a lot of time, you know, digging deep into it and talking. I think it was like 20 minutes long, so like, you know, there was probably plenty of like research and background, and like it was probably a very warranted and justified thing to say. It's just, I have to disagree. As someone playing this game uh, every week, multiple times in a week. Uh, no, I have to strongly disagree. I think the moment they stopped having this generation, uh, you know, the PS3, 360 gen of games, they got way better. I guess it depends on what you want from a game, really. I personally prefer it to be as simulation-y, as close to the real thing as possible. 
some people like the big reversals and and the and the finisher spam and the pin spam and you know it to just be like a hard like game to play whereas i'm not really looking for a when it comes to wrestling i'm not looking for like a game to play if i want to if i want a fun game to play i'll go play literally any video game ever that's not a wrestling game um what i want is a good simulation from my wrestling game i want something that's like as close to the real thing as possible because uh having matches start off at a million miles per hour go a million miles per hour up until the finish which is normally you know a drop kick <laughs> Shout out to Sandow and Bret Hart. Um, I just don't, I don't know. I just don't think that's, I don't think that's the best thing ever, personally. That's just my personal opinion. Anyway, I said I was going to address some rumors that I've been hearing. Apparently the primetime players have been a little bit vocal about uh, the inclusion of Wade Barrett in the tag team championship rematch. Not in the sense of like, that they're upset that Barrett was in it. And, you know, they're, they're able to accept that, you know, they lost the tag team titles back to two former Raw stars who have both held singles championships and tag championships in the past. There's no shame in that. Uh, you know, primetime players, they don't look at that as like a, a huge loss on their part. You know, Wade Barrett is a former world tag team champion with uh, William Regal, as a matter of fact. And uh, Justin Gabriel is a former WWE tag team champion with Heath Slater. There's definitely a lot of background uh, to these guys that like, you know, they, they don't feel shame for losing to two very notable superstars, both former United States champions as well, actually. David Otunga is the only one of the three that has never held the US championship. So, again, like, they, they kind of see it as what it is, you know, a, a fair loss. But primetime players have said that it's very ap apparent and very obvious that the reason that Wade Barrett got involved was uh, because they knew that David Otunga would lose. They knew that he was the weak link and he would fail in reclaiming the tag team championships. But on top of that... Um, they're also, uh, spreading this rumor. I don't know how justified this is as a rumor, you tell me, but, uh, they believe that because Justin Gabriel was actually one of the top-ranked guys for the NXT Championship, and Fandango showed that speed, agility, athleticism, you know, the style of wrestler that, uh, one of the current tag team champions, Justin Gabriel, possesses is exactly the weakness of Andre the Giant. They say that uh, Barrett made sure that Gabriel was still one of the people competing in the tag team because that way he couldn't contend for the NXT Championship. And if he did, he'd probably beat Andre and then outshine Barrett by winning the big one, which Barrett has not done. So, trying to cause some friction, some tension between the Nexus. Whether or not it's true, I don't know, because I will admit that, uh, you know, you can't really trust Wade Barrett. That's not a, that's not a smart move. Thunder bomb there by Justin Gabriel. Cover on Sergeant Slaughter, and it should be it, but well, somehow he kicked out. I don't really know how. And here comes Titus O'Neil now. What business does he have out here? Well, I guess the former tag team champions. He does have some business out here, but I don't think this is necessary. Ooh, NXT crowd chanting that Justin sucks, and he'll show them. Justin Gabriel perfectly set up for that 450. What a finish this would be if not for Titus O'Neil and Sergeant Slaughter. And Slaughter just hit the ref. Disqualify that man. Disqualify him from NXT for the foreseeable future. Ever, actually. Just get, get rid of him. No more Sergeant Slaughter. Teacher, if you don't like Sergeant Slaughter, why don't you just take him out of your universe? Because the universe needs people that will lose. If it was just a roster full of people you liked, no one would lose. <laughs> Wade Barrett is extremely dangerous with his fist. Books the way. And imagine if he actually did win. Imagine the heat. Imagine how hard I get to shit on him on commentary. It it works either way. Oh, what a painful kick. Hey, wait a minute, what's he doing here? I think he's about to spank him. <laughs> It's not the other way he got a position there that was like, wait, no! You can't do that! That's Big John Stud! Titus, get out of here. Why isn't Otunga helping out? That's a good point, actually. I just thought about that. Why isn't Otunga coming out and neutralizing this situation? You know, this is currently three on two against the Nexus. The Nexus have another member. Why is he not coming out here and helping them? No, they're not done. 
No. Sergeant Slaughter tagged in and of course beautifully executed reversal there by Wade Barrett who takes Slaughter off his feet and oh right 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 old rake <laughs> sorry I started stumbling over my words there cover attempt here by Wade Barrett on Sergeant Slaughter and that's a kick out was Titus O'Neil just up on the corner of the Nexus can't do something about this guy Shut up, Slaughter. Go spit on a microphone. Cover attempt here by Wade Barrett. Get Titus out of here, ref. Get him out. He's not even just causing a distraction. He's literally running in the ring. This is not legal. Get him out of here. That's enough. I said that's enough. Belly to belly to Titus. I, I'm, I'm talking and role playing, you know. I'm putting myself in the position of uh, Wade Barrett. Barrett's seen enough. He's seen enough. The hero, Wade Barrett, with a neck breaker. Well, get out of here. This is a disqualification in any other match. Why not this one? Quality because 2K14 is the best game. And there's the bull hammer. We saw that for the first time here on uh, Darren Young to win the tag team championships. The new finisher of Wade Barrett. Uh, turns out he has quite the, uh, the background in uh, street fighting. And uh, with that, he has developed a move, the bull hammer. Vicious elbow to the face. And thank God Sergeant Slaughter got the pin for taken. Big John Stud, I'm just telling you, right? There are a lot of people you can team with on NXT, and you have picked the absolute. Go team with Virgil if you want a better partner. That's how low I would say Sergeant Slaughter is. Sell out. Be a member of the Million Dollar Man's little group. Whatever it takes. Just drop Sergeant Slaughter, all right? That's not helping anyone. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. I'm getting a little heated here. The Nexus are victorious. I don't know what happened to their theme. I'm going to have to double check that. But anyway, up next is our Triple Threat main event. The winner will get an earn your spot opportunity. A very rare. We've got back-to-back -back ones because in two weeks' time... Uh, no, three weeks' time, there'll be another... No, it will be two weeks. Two weeks after... Okay, so we got a qualifier this week. An earn your spot next week. And then two weeks after the one next week. So in three weeks' time, there'll be one just before Night of Champions as well. So we got quite a few going on here on NXT in the current time, but that is because Biggie Langston was cheated out of his opportunity, and he has decided that he will continue to pursue the NXT Championship in the meantime. The following Triple Threat Contest is an elimination match. Making his way to the ring. Well, there he is, Fandango, one man who would love to leave NXT behind him. He says that uh, if he can't become NXT champion, he has no interest in being on this brand. Now, I've got to say, Fandango gave Andre the Giant a real run for his money, and he showed what a potential star he is in the making. I would love to see this guy on either Raw or SmackDown. Well, next week could be a big opportunity for Fandango if he can win the Triple Threat here tonight. Now, I'm going to go by usual Universe Triple Threat rules because until stamina becomes a thing. <laughs> Sorry, I just really don't like this game in comparison to what's coming. Um, <laughs> until stamina becomes a thing, I really hate how Triple Threats flow. They never end. Uh, it's just pin break up, pin break up, pin break up over and over again. So, uh, until then, we're going to be having a lot of elimination multi-man matches. And... Uh, Yes, this is one of them. An elimination triple threat match. Now, for those of you that don't know, I think this is what it is, right? Sorry, I'll, I'll stop with this in a minute, because I do feel bad for anyone watching this that really likes this game. I just don't... I don't get it. 
because um, I, I mean I used to really like this it's just it's been superseded it, looking back at it it's not as good as it was I mean I liked this game so much I did two seasons on it initially um, I've, I've played this game for almost well by the end of this series it would be three uh, full calendar years in the universe I would definitely say I've put my time into this game to justify an opinion on it right so like Here's what I, I think. Now, for those that aren't familiar with it, hang on, I'll let Dusty get introduced first. For those that aren't familiar with it, I think um, there's a thing called the Zelda cycle, uh, which is where, um, I think that's kind of not really as relevant anymore, but it used to be a thing where like, the new game came out. And the cycle would move on. And the cycle would be that the newest game sucked. It was the worst one ever. Uh, the one before it was now better. When before that one was the one that sucked. And the one that was like a couple entries before that one. Was now a legendary one that everybody loved. Uh, and that one was really, really good. And we're all super nostalgic for that one. Uh, even though that one was just kind of a moderate one before in that sec and it's basically just that little triangle just the, the cycle would keep going people would just like as time went on they'd appreciate it but the new one would be really bad um and i think there's a wrestling game cycle where about 10 years after the game came out people start getting nostalgic for it. i guess this is the one they grew up with Because last year I was seeing loads of nostalgic posts for 13, and that would have come out in 2012, and obviously last year was 2022. And this year I'm seeing nostalgic stuff for 14, and you know, that came out in 2013. So I'm seeing a cycle here, I think I know what's going on. So maybe we'll see some actual appreciation for 15 next year, because it was a good game. Uh, that shift over to Xbox One and PS4 was very good. The PS3 360 versions are just this game with a different roster. Uh, and way less features because they didn't want the uh, last gen to have more features than the current gen but the current gen was built fresh so it had to obviously not have as much in it which is why 16 is a more complete game um, but you know maybe we'll actually see some appreciation for the uh, improvements next year uh, but yeah, so, you know, I'm not trying to hate on this game, it's just as I say, I'm starting to see a little love for it all of a sudden, and like, it's, it's always weird, because I'm like in the middle of playing the games when I see it, and I'm there going, oh man, you know, I'm like looking forward to it in the previous game, because they are improvements, don't get me wrong, like, this is, this is definitely better than like 12 and 13. Um, I think I'd still say 12 was better than 13, uh, to be honest, and I do, I do actually think that 11 was, you know, a pretty fun one. Um... The matches didn't flow very well, but then they don't in any of them. Um, it really doesn't become much of a thing until 15. 15 really had a lot of, like, what I would call necessary changes. Um, I just think that that was just, like, a big step towards, like, what it was going to be. It, it, the problem with 15, the only thing I will say about that is that it feels almost like a prototype for what was to come in 16. Because obviously it was, you know. It, it came out a little bit quick into the new gen of consoles existence I oh no didn't the no 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 the xbox one and ps4 came out around about the time 14 came out didn't they i don't remember i think it was actually 2013 so i mean they had a year to work on it uh, there's not that many excuses don't get me wrong i mean obviously most games take longer than a year to make so you know looking at you fight forever there's no excuses for you um it's a new team. It was their first game. It's Ukes and THQ. It's not their first wrestling game at all. <laughs> no excuses. Um, yeah, the PS4 came out around the same time as this game. So obviously this wasn't going to be a launch title though, was it? Yeah, they came out in November, whereas... Um, the, uh, the 2K14, I believe, came out in October, because that used to be the um, release time for these games. Yeah, yeah, like the very end of October. 
Yes. Yeah, it was Octoberish time every every game up until 22, I think, when they kind of like rebooted the series again. Extreme. <laughs> it's just three guys kicking each other. I do wonder who will be the next to leave NXT and who that will bring to NXT. You know, honestly, we always talk about, like, who NXT will be losing. There's not enough focus sometimes, I'd say, on the fact that NXT will be gaining someone. Because NXT gains a superstar from Raw or SmackDown. That's pretty big for NXT. Some of these guys, you know, they, they can really uh, help put this show on the map a little bit. And obviously, uh, as I've said many times before, it revitalizes their careers in a sense. For Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes, though, they've had a lot of opportunities at leaving uh, NXT in the past. Whereas I'd say for Fandango, this is a lot more crucial. Classic triple threat moment here. Double team on Dusty Rhodes. And a cross body. And another one. Oh, wow. I didn't actually think he was going to land that. Rick Flair and now Dusty taken down by Fandango. Rick Flair just <laughs> staggering in the ring. <laughs> and Fandango now lifting up Rick F uh, Dusty Road, sorry, not Rick Flair. Okay. Didn't actually think that's what he was gonna I thought he was gonna go for one of his finishes. I think he has like a leg sweep that he does from behind, doesn't he? That's a signature, not a leg sweep. I'm not a finisher, sorry. It's the leg sweep which is supposed to set up into the leg drop. Which is that he never does the leg drop. I'll tell you, Ric Flair and Fandango, they're working together to get Dusty out. And obviously, in a way, I can kind of understand, Dusty has had a lot of opportunities to leave NXT. And obviously, he's failed a lot of qualifiers. And he was the first guy to ever get the chance to leave NXT, as a matter of fact. And Fandango now looking to perhaps hit the last dance on Dusty Rhodes. But Ric Flair getting in the way because it's a triple threat. Very good. Well done, Fandango. Very good. Ric Flair now setting up for the figure four on Dusty Rhodes. Will Dusty tap out? Will we be down to two? I don't think so. He's done no damage to the legs. I can't believe everything that's transpired this no. far. It's been so physical. You're in trouble now. Well, Dusty and Rick really getting at it. Kind of leaving Fandango out of this one. Body drop sends Fandango over. Ric Flair, the only man standing right now. It looks like he's going to once again try to get Dusty Rhodes out. These two getting very physical with each other. Seems to be some kind of tension brewing. Thank you, Jim Ross. Oh, he's still going. The dream. You can just hear it. Like you're like, why does Jim Ross randomly come in with commentary lines when you can't play as him and like, you can't have him in uh, any of the arenas? And THQ would be like, it's an Easter egg, smiley face. <laughs> it's like, no, it isn't. It's a fuck up. I think maybe my guess for why Jim Ross has commentary lines for everyone in this game is uh, maybe if you use like the old arenas, he's supposed to be a commentator in them. Like if you use like the WrestleMania like two arena, he's not, I don't believe anyway. I think it's still Cole and Lola, no matter what arenas you use and like exhibition and stuff. But maybe that's why. Unless it is Jim Ross in those arenas and I just, I mean, I don't know if I've ever tested it. It could be what it is. I might have to report back to you on that one. I might have to attempt like an exhibition, just do like one in like WrestleMania like eight or something and just see if JR is the commentator with Jerry Lawler. That might explain it. It's a weird fuck up though, if not. Well, Dusty Rhodes unloading on Fandango, and Ric Flair's going to capitalize off of that. And Fandango's still kicking out. And, you know, in a way, Fandango's got uh, something to prove here tonight. He's in the ring with two wrestling veterans, two legends in the business. 
I mean, they're both in their prime and very young here in this universe, but, you know, in the business in general, we're talking about two legendary wrestlers. Uh, obviously, very established guys, and, you know, NXT is where they chose to start out, but truth be told, they don't need to be down here. Fandango is a fresh-faced young superstar looking to make that lasting impression. Back raked by Ric Flair. Very vicious. We're almost halfway through the time limit in this triple threat, though, and no one has been eliminated. I don't believe the only swap match will actually take place next week if we don't have a result. And there's the last dance by Fandango. Now get the cover. Get the cover. Get Ric Flair out. Don't worry about Dusty. Dusty, get, stay out of the way. There you go. Cover on Ric Flair, and it is not down to two. I was about to say it's down to two, but Ric Flair kicked out. Believe it or not, this match is on normal experience. I don't know why they're kicking out so much. Oh, cross body as Dusty was looking for the bionic elbow. And again, Ric Flair kicks out. And Dusty getting tired of being ignored here. Gets himself involved. And he's back in this one. I really thought we were going to see a Dusty springboard for a minute there. Could be trouble for Fandango if he can hit that elbow, but Fandango with a reversal. And now Fandango with the last dance on Dusty Rhodes. Is this the finishing point for Dusty in this triple threat match? Cover on Dusty. Fandango gets Dusty Rhodes out. Here we go now, Fandango with the Season 4 special on Ric Flair, looking to get this one wrapped up quick, and he does. So it will be Fandango competing for an opportunity to leave NXT next week. Now, who will he face? Will it be a Raw Superstar or a SmackDown Superstar? That is for him to decide. But a win is a win. And there's his dance partner, the Divas Champion, Summer Rae, who he can be reunited with if he was to leave NXT. Well, next week, you don't want to miss it. Fernando in the main event against a Raw or SmackDown superstar. Who's it going to be? We find out next week.